And so, we are continuing the Viego hype train. We have already covered the cinematic, but even before we get to Viego's bio, I quickly wanna go through his voice lines first, because not only do they reveal quite a lot of new lore, but also because there are some specific voice lines which hyped people up. You know what I'm talking about. And so, without further ado, with full props to Skin Spotlight, who by the way already set up a Wild Rift account as well, let me explain all the lore and the secrets hidden in Viego's voice lines. Ur Demon, when all life ends, you will return to your slumber. First of all, there is a voice line against Fiddlesticks, who has just about the most mysterious lore on Runeterra. There are about a dozen different theories about what is happening with Fiddlesticks, but we know that he is some kind of ancient great demon. It seems like he was one of the first to ever exist. Hence the legendary poem of the Ten Kings, where one devours the rest. On top of that, it is cool to see that even Viego, who is from a lost kingdom somewhere to the east, knows about Fiddlesticks. So it really tells you how popular the legend of Fiddlesticks really is. For all your ambition, Hecarim, this is what you are reduced to. Of course, Hecarim and Kalista were Viego's loyal followers. But Viego liked Hecarim more, because Hecarim was the one who liked to slaughter people, hence why he always followed Viego's orders. On the other side, Kalista was more reasonable, and so she didn't slaughter anyone without a good reason. That's why, when Viego traveled to the Shadow Isles, Kalista was one of the soldiers who refused to kill the monks. Your god could not stop me before, Sea Priestess. Do not challenge me again. Here it is interesting to see him mentioning that Ilawi's god tried to stop him before, which means that something already happened in the past. Of course, the god is Nagake Boros, the bearded lady of Bilgewater. But either this is referencing some ancient lore which we don't know about, or this voice line is referencing something that will happen in the Ruined King game. Theoretically, within the context of these voice lines, that game already happened. You will never have your vengeance, Kaista. Never. Here he is pointing at what I already mentioned. The moment the king decided to slaughter the monks of the Blessed Isles, Kalista was killed by Hecarim without even a chance to react. So technically, she was betrayed. That's why now, as an undead ghost, she is looking for vengeance. Sing, Carthus, sing of all that must be lost, and she who must be found. Of course, Carthus is the Death Singer. He acts sort of like a siren of the Shadow Isles. He is luring the souls of the dead towards him. Answer for your crimes, Death! Answer me! And here it is very interesting to see Viego referencing Kindred. Because Kindred are Death. They are who everyone has to meet at the end. And the crimes they apparently committed was taking his queen away. Go on then, tree. Defeat me if you can. It will never restore the Isles. Now, Maokai is one of the ancient spirits of the Blessed Isles. He was there before the Ruination, and in fact, when the Ruination happened, Maokai spread his roots deep below the Blessed Isles, and he nourished from the holy waters hidden down there. That's how Maokai survived the Ruination. And now, Maokai is on a quest to return the Isles back to their normal form. Interestingly enough, we will likely see what Maokai is doing now in the game too. I know you, Rise. Yes, you opened the way to the waters. And this voice line is very strange. Because what Viego said here is not true, as far as we know. The person who led the king to the holy waters was Thresh, not Rise. Let me quote Thresh's bio right after the king got to the Blessed Isles. Secretly, Thresh delighted in the slaughter that followed. The invading king was obsessed with resurrecting his dead queen, and Thresh willingly led him to the fabled waters of life. So as you can see, it was Thresh. But if Rice was the one who opened the way, because you know, maybe Thresh just led the king towards the waters, maybe there is something sketchy happening on top of that. I actually have a theory as to what he might be referencing here. We know that the king is delusional, for example, he is seeing the face of his queen in almost every woman around him. There are not many of them, but he does that. So it wouldn't be out of question to mistake Rise for his master, Master Tyrus. Because if you have a look at the timeline, the ruination happened before the Rune Wars. And the Rune Wars was when Master Tyrus died and Rise picked up his mantle. 
So it is technically possible that Master Tyrus was there when the king tried to resurrect his queen. So even though it was Thresh who led him to the holy waters, it could have been Master Tyrus who actually opened the gates. It is just a theory, but this might be actually possible. Why, Isos? Why do you hide your face from me? First of all, obviously, this is referencing the fact that Senna has the soul of Isolde inside her, or at the very least a fragment of her. But most importantly, in the past, I pronounced it Isolde, which kinda makes more sense seeing how it's spelled. But it is Isolde. So excuse me if I pronounce it wrong out of habit. Your treachery doesn't surprise me, Thresh. Only that you believed you'd win. And yes, he's referencing the fact that Thresh was there when the ruination happened. Because Thresh was actually one of the monks of the Blessed Isles. Hello, uncle. I'm surprised you haven't been torn apart by an angry mob. And this is the voice line that everyone's been looking for. Yes, Vladimir is Viego's uncle. And I have to say, this makes so much sense. And full props to the writer who figured out how to connect these two. If you know the history of Runeterra and the history of Vladimir, who we have actually recently covered, this probably excites you, because it fits together like a perfect puzzle. First of all, let me mention that Viego is from a kingdom that is not shown on the map. In his bio, it was mentioned that the kingdom was to the east over the oceans, which indicates that it might be even further behind Ionia or the Shadow Isles, or at the very least, it was somewhere around them. It is not in Valoran as we thought. But now, since we know that Vladimir is Viego's uncle, it also means that the forgotten kingdom that Vladimir was from is not old Noxus. It is actually the kingdom of the ruined king, where Hecarim and Kalista were from as well. And once again, it is very likely outside of the map we know about. Now, the reason why Vladimir being Viego's uncle makes so much sense is because Vladimir's lore is kinda based around the political games around their family. Let me quote Vladimir's bio to set up context. Legend once told of a prince from a kingdom threatened by the infamous Darkin, as their great war spilled into Valoran. With his father's crown at stake, and many more heirs ahead of him in the line of succession, the unfortunate youth was traded to the fallen god warriors as a hostage. Of course, this is how Vladimir got in contact with the Darkin, and this is how he got the blood magic. Because he had many older siblings, his father didn't care about him, and so he gave him away to the Darkin for the king's own safety. Now, with Viego being his nephew, this means that Viego's father was Vladimir's brother. In other words, Viego's father was the firstborn of this massive family. That's why that sibling became the king, and that's why Vladimir was traded to the Darkin. It is a chain of unfortunate events, but theoretically, it is because Viego's father was born first that Vladimir had to deal with the Darkin. Again, I wouldn't have thought of this myself, so full props to the writer who actually figured out how to connect all the pieces. And here Viego is talking about how he is surprised that Vladimir hasn't been torn apart by an angry mob, because Vladimir himself became a tyrant, after the Darkin allowed him to wield blood magic. But more on Vladimir in just a second. Ah, the monk from the waters. And someone else. He saw it? Here you can see that Viego thinks that Yorick is carrying Isolde with him. Of course, that's not true. Or at least, it is not true as far as we know. The Maiden of the Mist is not Isolde. It is not the Queen. Because, you know, the Maiden is actually trying to kill people. That's not what Isolde is doing. And this is going back to what I said at the beginning of this video. We know that the King is delusional. And on his quest to find his Queen, he is paranoid and he thinks his Queen is everywhere. That's why he's desperate to know if the Maiden of the Mist is Isolde. In death as in life, Hecarim, you will fight only for me. Once again, this is pointing at the fact that Hecarim was his loyal servant. You never believed in my rule, Kalista, and now this is your fate. And once again, this is pointing at the fact that Kalista was questioning his rule. Isolde, I could not see myself in your eyes. And this is an interesting quote, because I could not see myself in your eyes is probably pointing at the fact that Isolde doesn't care about Viego anymore, or rather that she sees the evil that he has done, and now Isolde is siding with Senna. I believe that's why in the teaser for Viego, Riot mentioned that the future champion who is totally not Isolde by any means, 
will have to decide who they are loyal to, Viego or Senna. This quote is kinda referring to the fact that Isolde is on Senna's side. So angry, uncle, it was one unanswered letter a thousand years ago. Now back to Vladimir. One unanswered letter a thousand years ago. Curiously enough, that's just about when the ruination happened. But really, what this is referring to is that when Vladimir was traded to the Darkin, he probably tried to contact his father and the kingdom, but since no one really cared about Vladimir, they probably didn't even answer his letters. That's what Viego is talking about here. But also, I wanna point out an interesting theory that popped up recently. You know how in Vladimir's story he keeps painting portraits of himself, so over the hundreds of years he doesn't forget who he was? Well, in the latest story, there is the theory that he wasn't painting a portrait of himself, but of Viego. I personally don't think that's the case. I think that Vladimir was just painting himself, because the appearance matches him perfectly. But there are ways for Riot to turn that portrait into Viego without retconning anything. So I quickly wanted to mention that in case that ever becomes the truth. Isol, I know it is you. Show yourself to me. And once again, the king is delusional. The maiden is not Isolde. Although there is the very tiny chance that just like Senna had the soul of the queen inside her, maybe that wasn't the entire soul. And maybe that was just a fragment. If that is the case, there is the possibility that other people have other fragments of the queen inside them. So should Wright decide to make that canon, there is the possibility that the Maiden of the Mist might be a fragment of the queen. But right now, as far as we know, that is not true. I remember her sinking beneath the waters. And then... and then... This is a beautiful reference to Viego's bio. You see, after Thresh led him to the waters of life, and after they dipped the queen in them, the queen rose again, not as the zombie corpse which was previously canon, but more as an undead spirit. And in that form, confused that she is not dead anymore, and probably being scared of everything around her, she picked up Viego's blade and she drove it through Viego's heart. That's why he has the hole in his chest. But after the queen did that, you know, after the queen which Viego is looking for killed him, Viego lost memory of what happened then. That's why here he can't remember what happened. And that's why he is still desperately looking for the queen, despite the fact that the queen is fleeing from him, seeing all the horrors he had done, and despite the fact that the queen even tried to kill him. Sure, she was confused and she wasn't sure what she was doing, but still, I am looking for the moment the king learns about this. The Shadow Isles are just the beginning. He also has a lot of quotes about the ruination continuing. This is really setting up the story of 2021. We know that the king will try to continue the ruination in other places too. Because really, through the mist he can find his queen. So if he is able to spread it around, he will find her eventually. That's why he is mentioning that the Shadow Isles were just the beginning. He is ready to ruin the world just so he can find his queen. I will take and take until there is nothing left but her. That's exactly what I was talking about. And this is where the voice lines would stop. But you may notice that there was one voice line which I believe that skin spotlights cut out. And that was one of the long move voice lines which mentioned Kamavea, which was a name for the Lost Kingdom. Now, the reason why this voice line is not here anymore is because it was cut from the game. Apparently, Kamavea in some languages means old bed. And so Wright decided to cut it and rename the kingdom. That was confirmed by the writer himself. So we know the kingdom has a different name, but right now it wasn't revealed to us yet. Although it was also confirmed that we will learn that name eventually. So just know that no, I have not skipped this line, which a lot of people were looking for, but instead it was actually cut from the game. This line is not canon anymore. But that is it for Viego. He had a lot of voice lines where he just bragged about his queen. So I skipped all of those. But whenever he was talking to a champion, it was always interesting. And that's what I love about champions who are connected to the lore. Their interactions always reveal something new. So I really can't wait for Isolde to be released. It will be similar to the release of the Ruined King. I will have a lot of videos to make. Speaking of which, I will now focus on Viego's bio. So, still riding the hype train, I will see you in the next one.